Hey, this is how I... <laughs> I'm ready, come on, ready. Hey, what's up, players? This is WWE Hall of Famer Teddy Long, and I just want you to know that you're watching The Jeffrey Show Live, and that's real talk, players. Guys, this is Jeffrey Taylor from Jeffrey Show Live, and I have a very special guest with us. We have Jonathan Gresham, currently signed to Ring of Honor, where he's one half of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion, alongside Jay Lethal. How you doing today, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Sorry about the, uh, you know, long time for us, you know, linking up and everything. No, you're good. I appreciate you. I remember... Um, it seems like you're a late night person because that email was super late <laughs> because I was kind of like, what, what is the floodgates that's opening right now that the email yeah. got responded to? Uh, where was the change of heart? Let's start off with that question because I remember in the email, it was kind of like the South got something to say. That's the way I took it when I read it in the middle of the night. No, man. Um, really, I try to not uh, do a lot of uh, interviews. Uh, a lot of people reach out and, um, you know, I'm always questioning their reach, um, their reasoning for asking for it other than just, you know, wanting to interview a wrestler. Uh, and in my early career, I did a lot of them, and I thought it was good to do that. But after time, I saw how some people could use your words against you. And so I'm really particular who I work with nowadays. So that's pretty much one of the main reasons why I try to, like, limit myself to doing maybe, like, four or five of them a year. I, wow. That is a small number for the year. Yeah. To be honest. So I can't thank you enough again for the opportunity. I remember when I got to see you win the New South Pro Wrestling Championship a while back, a few years ago, and that card was stacked. We had stars from all <laughs> over now dispersed. How did it was feeling at that day when you won that humongous championship that went viral on the internet, to be honest? <laughs> To be honest, at first I thought it was a rib. I thought it was a joke because I got to the show and uh, they were like, yeah, we're, we're going to have you win the belt. And uh, I was kind of laughing because I saw how gigantic it was. So I was like, you you know, like, I'm not that big of a guy. You you want me to travel with this thing. You want me to uh, you know, come out with it. And so I thought it was kind of a rib. But once I realized they were telling the truth, it was just, okay. I just dismissed that from my mind and just went with it, you know. So, hey. It was okay. It felt really good to go back home and actually uh, do something, you know, credible like that, actually. You know, I haven't been able to wrestle a lot in the South, to be honest, since I uh, was training. Anyway. Right, right, right. And the person you took the championship from is a mutual friend. You guys have a lot of history together. Baron Black. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of, if not my closest friend in pro wrestling. Um yeah, that's my dude. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of matches together, and uh, we've both grown since our time at WWE Force. It was real fun to work with him again. Super fun. Take us back to WWA4, because if I'm not mistaken, that's where you kind of won your first championships. Those were the moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, school championships. That's what <laughs> I call them. I don't, I don't really count them much. They were just us. I really liked the way Hughes had us train uh after time he never really told us really why he was doing certain things but over time i learned that he was training us for everything he was training us to learn how to work as a unit when it comes to like tag team wrestling he uh uh taught us how to like be a mid-card guy a guy that had to battle up the card to get to a title and then finally of course everybody wants to be a champion so he was actually teaching us also how to be a main event style wrestler uh, with promos and different things like that, uh, how to build a main event style match opposed to just like every match kind of being the same. And uh, I think as a, as an in-ring performer, a lot of the times that stuff can go unnoticed when you watch other matches. And then like when you really take time to study, which now I do more of that now, but when I was younger, I really didn't care. And I think that's what a lot of young guys do. They just kind of gloss over that fact that you have to have a different match when you're the main event opposed to being like the first match on the card. And I think a lot of that gets jumbled and fused together now. But Hughes was very good at teaching us that earlier on. Shout outs to Mr. Hughes. If I can go down a list of all the people that he has trained and has been successful, you're you're on the list as well. It it just shows how good of a trainer that he that he was. Like shout out to Mr. Hughes right there. Yeah. 
So take me back to your actual first championship, because, of course, I wasn't there for that. What was that moment where you had the Shawn Michaels tears, where the boyhood dream <laughs> kind of came together? I see you looking up. <laughs> I, I really didn't have one. Um, if you oh, know, like my very first championship? Yeah, your very first. Mm-hmm. You mean like my favorite? You mean like the actual very first? Um, let's go with the very first, if you can recall. I know you've been doing this a long time. Okay, so yeah, yeah, because I mean, my memory, I take head bumps for a living, so bear with me here. Um, let's see, it had to have been, uh, there was a guy that was hooked up uh, with the school, with Mr. Hughes' school, um, named Rocky King. So it was like, essentially, he was getting us, you know Rocky King. I love Rocky. <laughs> right, right, right. He was a really good dude, really good dude. Um he was running shows. I think it was called BWA. I forget what it stood for, but we normally did matches in uh, Douglasville, Georgia. Okay. And sometimes we would do some near Green Bar Mall uh, every blue moon. And I think for him, I, I don't think he even had titles. I think I came across a replica WCW United States belt. And I think mm-hmm. I took it to him and was like, hey, man, use this for a championship. And because it was mine, he was like, Forget it. You're going to win it. And I was like, okay. I forget who I wrestled against, but I think that was my first belt. And I think they called that, like, the beat of Cruiserweight title or something, maybe. But that was my first belt. And me, like, having it and owning it and then winning it, I really didn't feel too special. So I wouldn't really count it as a Shawn Michaels crying moment. Man, you say. So um, I remember when I came into the industry l- much later on in a sense, and I remember seeing like Teddy Long pictures of that, but I didn't know that she was a part of it. So that was kind of interesting. Now yeah, to yeah. Hear that Because I was seeing other pictures of everyone else, like um, Rocky King was showing me when I met him. But uh, Okay. Oh, everybody. so you, you went to WWE 4 as well? Yeah, I went um, after um. you left, of course. But um, so I didn't get to see everyone for the most part. I came in at like 2016, 2017. Oh, yeah, I was gone then. Yeah, you were gone. So um, but but everybody was on the wall and everybody was still being talked about on the Internet. So it was kind of like this moment being in there. It's kind of like, oh, Jonathan Gresham used to be here. Like it was just a moment in a sense. But you did mention a favorite. And now it got me curious, to be honest. Like, what is your What's favorite that? championship win? OK, bye. Um. To me, it, it would probably have to be the Zero One Championship when I won it in Japan, the um, Tenkaichi Junior Tournament. Um, that was really big to me because, uh, first of all, I was the first foreigner to win it. Um, and I was able to fight or wrestle with one of my favorite wrestlers, Yukuto Hidaka. So, like, to me, I think that was the biggest moment. And I actually had my Shawn Michaels moment in the middle of the dojo when oh. I think we were all training and everybody it went and Nakamura-san, which was the um, the guy that was actually bringing me over, the owner at the time, asked me to stay after training. And I stayed after training with um, with Hidaka and everyone. And then afterwards, uh, I think Jordan Devlin was there at the time. Wow. And Sean Maxer, he was wrestling. He still wrestles there to this day. They came in the dojo and was like, hey, Gresh, something's going on. We need to like... We need to have you come in the office and talk to us about it. I forget what the rib was, but they had me come in, and I was so nervous because, like, everyone speaks Japanese, and, like, I, I didn't understand it. So I could have done anything at this point. And so I'm walking in the office, and then uh, Nakamura is sitting in the back, and uh, they started talking, and then they finally start bringing up something. I forget what it was, but essentially it was like, I'm about to be in trouble. And then they were like, you're winning the Tenkaichi Junior Tournament. And I just remember, like, being so shocked and then just, like, having to hold back tears because it was just like I always wanted to wrestle for the company and wrestle with right. the guys that are in the company and then for them to say hey yo we think that you're the one to do this you know it was it was huge for me so um wow. yeah I was actually able to share that moment with Sean and um Jordan so that was pretty cool I love that I love that right there you mentioned Japan and you <laughs> definitely wrestle all over can you kind of name out a few of the places outside of the country that you work for you know, it doesn't have to be all of them but just popping out because you wrestled all over the country um, the country's of the not country. really right 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 i've wrestled more i think outside of the country than i have yeah, here wow. um of germany of course england of course uh luxembourg france um where's some other european countries they're not coming to mind right now but um taiwan uh hong kong uh japan of course and mexico I already named France. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think of some more. Oh, yeah, Ireland, too. 
Scotland. Scotland, yeah. Or all over the UK. Uh, no, I just had a long layover there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, quite a few places. Some of them escaped me, but um, my favorite was definitely like Hong Kong and Taiwan, though. Really fun. I've heard France being mentioned more than once. <clears throat> well, I lived there for about two years, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything you can spit back at us in French or anything? Um, <laughs> j'ai parlé un petit peu français. <laughs> it's just <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, like um, I I didn't like learn French the proper way. I learned like being forced into it. So it's one of those things where like if you don't use it, you lose it. Come back home, and I couldn't really find any friends that really spoke it. Everybody spoke like Spanish or something like that. So mm-hmm. it was one of those things I could practice. Oh, Spanish though. Are you doing in Spanish as well? No. Okay. No, no. I thought that's one of the things that would uh <laughs> rubbed off as well. This time when you go back to visit Paris, uh will you be staying for two years? I would assume not. But... Uh no. no. <laughs> you know? It sounds like you you wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I would definitely like to stay and catch up with a couple of buddies. I think I have something lined up to hang out with like two or three friends. Not two years. Um, yeah, not for years though. Just a couple of days. A couple not of days. Yeah, yeah. That time's over. The octopus that's that's currently going on right now, which the entrance is crazy, no matter where I see it. How personally from your mouth, how did it all come together? Okay, so this character that that I have, um, unfortunately, I have been messing around with it since about 2015. I went to Mexico. Uh, and, uh, I knew I wanted to do the octopus persona and, uh, I thought to myself, well, Mexico is probably the best place to like start this. Cause they got like crazy gear makers. So I had, um, a gear maker create the first set of gear, which looks similar, but not really the same. It was more cartoony at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was striving and I did it for maybe a couple of months. I remember I took the, the look to Germany and stuff and people really liked it, but I wasn't happy with it because it didn't look realistic. I had envisioned like a more realistic, like, look of the mask. Right. And uh, it took me a while, so I ended up selling that mask to a couple of fans in Germany. And whenever I go back, they always bring it, and they want me to use it for that event. So I think um, for the Tag League tournament, Mm -hmm. I used the mask when I was there for the time before when Chris Brooks and I wrestled with each other for the the tag gimmick. But um, it took me a while to actually find a latex mask maker, um, which I found them... What's this year? At the middle, middle of the beginning of last year. Wow. That was, I, so I had the whole persona like for a long time and I wanted to use it, but I couldn't really push through with it until I found the right look. So I actually found the guy that would actually be able to make the match for me. And like, here we are. But I've been holding on to it since 2015, the idea. I will say that it looks very realistic now. <laughs> now, like the details. It's what I wanted, for sure. <laughs> How it That's came what I was how how does that go along with your your personality in a sense? Sometimes people pride themselves in the industry as being a perfectionist, or how could you characterize yourself like determined or driven? Like because you didn't give up, you got what you wanted. You was very precise. You had the vision. What kind of like characteristics uh, does that describe Jonathan Gresham as? I think very driven, um, very selective as well, because like. I had a lot of people say they can make it, and then I would ask them the materials they were going to use. They kind of mentioned what they're going to use, and I tried to explain what I wanted, but they didn't really get what I wanted uh, or what I was looking for. So uh, definitely very driven and very selective, I think. Nice, nice, nice. In a sense of that is that I personally don't ever see you in 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 the press negatively. Why do you think that is so? Because it's kind of like sometimes that can be misconstrued as – um, people not getting it right. Maybe it can go left or, you know, how fans try and create things up. Why do you think that you and so many other people stay in the press negatively sometimes? Like, what's the secret? <laughs> how do you say so unproblematic? <laughs> well, I think for the most part, I try to keep my personal life at bay because I feel like that's not the interesting part. I mean, well, I can talk about personal life now. I literally come home, I watch a lot of Netflix, and I play a lot of video games. 
Um, and if I told people that on social media all the time, I'm just a boring dude, you know? Uh, so <laughs> like, I just try to like keep my personality where it's interesting. I love to watch wrestling. I love to train in wrestling, which I think everybody already understands about me. So like, there's not really much more to know. Um, and staying out of, I don't know, negative press. I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> I think one of the things that I, I do do and I'm conscious of is that I try to treat people the way that I want to be treated. I try to listen to everyone because I can remember when I was coming up and back when I was coming up, uh, the whole stigma of being like a bigger guy and the wrestling industry being like a body style company having to be bigger and stuff like that. Um, that was really projected loudly around me and on me. And so I never want anybody else to feel like less than, or, you know, ignored or anything like that, because oftentimes that was the way I felt and how I was treated. So like, I really stay conscious of that. So I try to like talk to everybody, whether it's fans, wrestlers, promoters, I just try to treat them the way that I want to be treated. And I think that's probably one of the reasons possible. <laughs> That's the key. I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that. Um, of course, I can always read online, but I like talking directly because you, there's a lot of things that you read. But out of your mouth, you mentioned um, the bigger, smaller man. Of course, I just thought of Ray Mysterio. But who are some of your influencers? Get into the out of your mouth. Um, to be honest, um, I don't know. Like, I really don't have any, like, influences when it comes to size. Like, of course, Ray Mysterio, I connected with him early on when I was watching wrestling. But I couldn't really tell you. I just, I was always a wrestler. So when it comes to sizes and weight classes, like I, when I, in my weight class, I was, I was never a small guy. Right. So me being small, I really didn't notice that I was really small to everybody until I started pro wrestling and that whole crap was pushed on me about being a bigger guy, heavyweights and all this stuff. So then I was like, oh, so there is a difference. I am different. And then I started to realize just how, how much shorter I am than a lot of people. And then I started to realize, well, I'm going to have to use this to my advantage here. What can I do? And to me, pro wrestling is always, should always be about story first. So I thought to myself, well, then let me just create a story around my size. And then, you know, the rest is history. To be honest, so, I go along. I, sorry about that. What was that? Oh, no. Oh, just influence. I, I'll just have to say me, I guess. Like, I don't know. I just inspired myself to, to be better. I love it. Oh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> but I do want to go back to, I must admit, Jonathan, um, I feel like I'm fairly new to your career in a sense of probably four years for me personally, where I've really been following like consecutively since about 2016. That's when I really got into the independent scene heavy. And um, I turned off from the main, which, which everybody watches every single week and start going to the shows and start like, oh, there's this underground world. So, my point of this is that I've never really seen you as anything other than being a fan favorite, a good guy, as we like to say. Do you think, well, I guess you've probably already done it before sometimes in your career, but I guess which one do you like more? And do you find people like myself shocked when you are sometimes on the opposing side of being a good guy? Because I, I can't see myself not chaining for you, but at the Atlanta show, I found myself seeing you do things during the match. You're like, why is he doing this? Like, why is he? <laughs> like, it was. It just didn't make sense for me after following for so many years. <laughs> mm. I think. I think also uh, with that is my stature. Like a, a smaller competitor, I think a lot of the times there is difficult to feed into them being like a heel character or a bad guy. You know, definitely in there with bigger guys. Um, but I enjoy being a heel more. I fell in love with it more so when I was working with Chris Brooks in England uh, and in Germany doing the CCK persona. And uh, I like just, I don't know, the vibe of being a bad guy, being able to like come up with like cheeky and sneaky little ways to do things and, you know, distract the referee, being a master manipulator is what I like to call it. And uh, it's really fun coming up with ideas to like make everything make sense, you know? Um, and I'm a big fan of that. Of course, it's, to me, wrestling always comes back to storytelling, so... 
and that I could definitely see like the little sneakiness was involved in the match that I'm referring to because I was like, there were certain things that didn't make me full blown go boo and everything. There were just moments that had me confused and kind of like, yo, I don't think that I should be rooting for this guy anymore if he's gonna do certain things. So it wasn't like a, a full like low blow or throw. Right, it was right. kind of like there was just moments where, where the psychology was kind of like making me put my head a little bit. I think I think one of the most important things to do with like changing into something in pro wrestling or any any story really is a gradual kind of change. Everyone shouldn't be like straight to like a low blow. I think that's like towards the end when you really need it, you know. Um, but like being a master manipulator and manipulating others, people around you, I think that speaks volumes about one's character. Nice, 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 nice. You're from Atlanta, ATL. <laughs> What's some of the hot spots in Atlanta that you that you got that you, that's come off from you? I know Atlanta has changed. A lot of people call it the new Atlanta. What's some mm-hmm. of the hot spots in Atlanta for you? Um, let's make it a little bit more specific, food wise. If somebody is trying to come to Atlanta, you know, um, I'm a huge. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw you do the deep side. I was kind of you have been across the world. You probably <laughs> hopefully you can still remember. <laughs> now. Now, when you talk about Georgia and the South and Atlanta, I don't. I feel like anybody that's from there understands that we're talking about Southern food, unhealthy food. Um, <laughs> so, like for me, my big thing when I was younger was um, hopefully you can remember this, but WK Wings. Whoa, that is a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're around anymore. I don't but, that's my knowledge. <laughs> no, that was that was my joint though. I would I would hit up WK Wings whenever I, I got the feeling for lemon pepper wings, you know? So no no place in the world make lemon pepper like Atlanta. Lemon pepper wings like Atlanta. What the culture. What about activity wise? Are were you a cascade skating? Did you go skating? I was, you know uh, skating? The Cater family, the Cater family skate was where I went when I was younger. I mean I'm pretty sure you remember those days. Do you? Was that around Atlanta? For you? Nah, yeah. I heard no, no, about. No, okay, it. it's a that lot. Was, that was back in the day. It's a lot on social media, but <laughs> like yeah. I miss this the, the old Atlanta, this new Atlanta. Just the, was was Freak Nick around with you? I know they're trying to make a comeback. Was Freak Nick? Yes, around? I actually <laughs> I actually remember Freak Nick because I lived in the Grant Park area, uh, but I went to school in DeKalb County. Um, but I remember. Oftentimes, like when I was younger, I'd go ride my bike. I did that for exercise all the time, ride my bike. And I just remember around the time they were trying to bring it back, Freak Nick, and it came to like the Grant Park area a little bit. And I could just remember like getting ready to cross the street and a car would just like pull through and take a right turn. And there's just women in the in the back of the bed just shaking their butts and guys just like pouring beer and everything. It was just wild, man. You know, um, it's when like I was younger, always I would, thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh wow. man! Beginning back to wrestling in a sense is how is it partnering with Jay Lethal? To be honest, Jay Lethal is definitely respected. It's Black History Month. He's one that when I think of World Heavyweight Champion, I'll be like Jay Lethal. <laughs> like that's that's our guy. Super long reign. I remember when he <laughs> defeated you when you tried to take the champion. <laughs> Great match, by the way. Great. Five stars, but how is it? You know, it's like a power. It's like, it's honestly like I'm gonna end it at this: is that it's not really like a um mega powers explode. Sometimes watching you guys, I saw the picture you posted. I was kind of like, wow, that's wow. <laughs> for me. It's uh, I don't know. It's really weird, like looking at where I come came from and then like where I am now. Um, it's just really big for me because, like, just sitting, talking to him, learning from him, I don't know if he he sees it like that, but just, like, listening to his point of view on matches and different things like that and being close enough to watch him do promos. I'm around when he does promos now all the time and uh, just listening to the way he thinks about stuff. It just it, it makes me a better wrestler uh, in my mind. Um, I think I've gotten loads better since being around him, and I'm, I'm happy that, like, uh, we gravitated towards each other that way. Um, to be like partners now and tagging. So uh, I look at him as being the best in the world and I learned from him back then and I'm learning from him today. So, um, you know, he's definitely a role model for me and a lot of people like me. 
Hey, you guys are teammates right now, but can we get another match one day? I mean, can we get another... I don't know. <laughs> right now, right now, right now we got a plan. We got to we gotta restore that honor, man. We got to restore that so, honor. Yeah. Speaking of... Speaking of Ring of Honor, that is exactly what's happening. Um, I know that you're not oblivion to it. I don't like to be dumbfounded with people, but we saw the press that Ring of Honor got in 2019 towards the end and everything. So when you say restoring the honor, um, there's a lot that Ring of Honor is just doing, in my opinion, right. Um, the, the free enterprise show, um, all my friends was kind of up there and they were sending me pictures and telling everybody. They was kind of like, oh, snap, and all this that was going on, great matches. So I think that you as a trainer, how has that been? That is what I want to allude to, restoring the honor. You as a trainer, because you all be going in. You guys be putting in the work. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, um, I've always wanted to be a trainer. Once I got to the point where I thought, like, I viewed wrestling differently from a lot of other people. And uh, at one point, I thought I was just filling myself. And I was like, well, pipe down, John, maybe. You know, you don't. But then I started, like, training more places. People started booking me to do more seminars all around. And I started talking to some of the younger guys coming up in wrestling. And I realized that, like, you know, a lot of people, I think of wrestling like mixed martial arts, like music almost. So I call it, like, genres of wrestling. And I feel like there's one genre of wrestling that reigns supreme now. And I call it, like, the hybrid style of professional wrestling, where everybody kind of does a little bit of everything. And um, I'm, I'm now guilty of it, too, because of keeping up with the Joneses and trying to keep a job or whatever. But I'm a firm believer in, like... Uh, having a variety show. I don't feel like every show should, from top to bottom, feel the same. Um, and uh, now that I am training, I try to teach that to anybody that's going to really listen to me or wants to be trained by me or trained with me, um, that like there's different styles of wrestling. And if I can explain for a moment, I look back at old Ring of Honor, and I find Ring of Honor to be um, one of the companies or the company that influenced me the most. Because it's what when I realized that wrestling was... More so like mixed martial arts. In mixed martial arts, you have like karate, jiu-jitsu, you know, Muay Thai, kickboxing, all these different styles, sambo. And in professional wrestling, you have like the brawler, the technician, the British-style technician, uh, vintage lucha libre versus what they do now. Like there's so many different styles of professional wrestling that I feel like aren't represented in today's climate. And to me, it's sad. You know, there's a lot of uh, maestros in Mexico that that genre of wrestling, that maestro style of wrestling – uh, God forbid, but it might die with them. And is there anybody to continue to teach it besides the videotapes that we have? But when you think about studying tape, a lot of the young guys now are just studying current New Japan and what's on WWE and NXT. So we're just getting recycled stuff over and over again. You're not getting anybody truly, honestly thinking for themselves anymore. You're just getting new robots trying to act like Prince Devin and Johnny Gargano and guys like that. So like, I really want to help people look at the other side of wrestling and see what else is out there. So for me, the foundation gimmick is, it's a gimmick, but it's also pretty real for me. Exactly. Exactly. And, wow. That was heavy to be honest, man, because it's something that I can relate to, but I think that being on the other side, I think that it's important to know your role in this industry. I had a, a talk with some of the other wrestlers and I think that respect is one of the biggest things, you know, being able to talk to oh, you sure. all in perspective and just knowing where to go in wrestling, I think that there was a point at Ring of Honor when that controversy happened on what, how far fans should go to, towards the barricades, and sometimes with that, um, shit, certain people be in locker rooms and all things. But it's kind of like respecting what the um, what the wrestlers and the athletes do in a sense. So it's kind of like I love to get you all perspectives because we watch it, but you guys are actually in the ring. So just hearing it, it's kind of like, oh, I want this, but I don't want to just keep tweeting it because it's kind of like I appreciate what's being given as well at all times so it's also a tremendous amount of respect when you know things are changing you know ultimately <clears throat> because it starts with the training to be honest if somebody's breaking it down and, and... yeah I, I think i think a lot of wrestling today and this is of course what i think this isn't the gospel i'm not saying it is but i think a lot of wrestling today is booked via twitter I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. Is uh, the fans have a little more power than they think, um, and a lot of times that's good and that's bad. Uh, but the good is when wrestler A is working his butt off and not getting rewarded for it, and the fans can see it. 
and sometimes the fans, I like to call it sometimes, they get on a bandwagon and they can actually push that person through to get something more than they would have if they didn't. So I think in a sense of having fans that understand their power instead of abusing it, you know, I think mm-hmm. I think that's key. You know what I mean? Definitely when it comes to social media. Exactly, exactly. I agree. I agree, to be honest. Uh, social media, uh, are you a fan of it? Not really. <laughs> Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> I mean, my, for me, I grew up in a time where I didn't have cell phones. Like, uh, I'm a millennial, I think, right? 20, I mean, 31? Yeah, you're a millennial. Okay, so I'm a millennial, but I'm not like some of the other millennials that are around that, like, didn't have the opportunity to grow up without, like, a device in their hands. Right. Like, I remember playing with sticks and being outside, and, like, I remember mom saying, you know, when the lights come on, that's when you come inside. I'm not sure if a lot of... Millennials can remember that, you know, uh, there's a lot of us that can't. So like, um, uh, for me, I can survive without social media and it's really difficult for me to, I'm learning definitely because of my wife, I'm learning how to use it better, you know? Um, so, uh, it's a work in progress for me. Yeah. Because, um, similar to how you were saying seminars, there are social media seminars as well. Um, in addition to the, <laughs> to the wrestling seminars, how to conduct yourself on social media. <laughs> yeah. I, I really think, uh, promotions, definitely bigger promotions should really like get these people to come in and speak to their wrestlers about social media, how to interact with fans, um, you know, when to post, when not to post, what kind of stuff to say and what not to say, because one bad tweet can kind of cancel you sometimes now. Like, just takes one. Like, just takes li- one. Like, yeah. literally. <laughs> it's, it's, sad. it's almost like you can't make a mistake now, and it's really sad, you know? Mm-hmm. Cancel culture. Mm. Cancel culture right now. It's Black History Month, Jonathan Gresham. I want to get to that. I'm so glad. And that was another reason why I also want the, um, was kind of like, oh, this is perfect and everything because I feel like it just doesn't stop during this month, to be honest. It, should. it really should. To get that, that spotlight, but that energy should be continued throughout the entire year, in a sense. Um... Of course, there's so many um, African American wrestlers that I have. But any particular stands out to you that that you're rooting for when you was younger coming into the industry? Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question again? Any African American wrestlers growing up that really stood out to you personally, like some of your favorites? Um, coming up, uh, you know, I think it was a little bit later when I was a little bit older, but I always felt like Shelton Benjamin was going to be world champion, and I just. I remember watching him, and I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to he freaking wins the world title. Um, you know, and, um, yeah, that was, to me, Shelton Benjamin was my guy because, like, I had an amateur background, too. So him coming from that as well, like, I I gravitated towards him more, you know. The whole storyline with Kurt Angle and stuff because Kurt Angle is one of my favorite wrestlers as well. Yeah, nice. um, so, like, I don't know. I just gravitated towards him, and I just – I pegged him as next world champ. You know what I mean? So – Yes. Yeah. People are still outraged about that on social media. In a I, sense. Bet. I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I mean, remember. it's not too late, though. It's not too late. It's not too late, right? It's never too late. It's never exactly. too late. And it goes back to um, with social media is that sometimes it could cancel you one bad thing, but I feel like social media has kind of influenced some things too massively. As well, I remember saying the booking wise, like, oh, yeah, I feel like the one of the moments that was highlighted last year was social media hashtag. They had a hashtag going, <laughs> and then oh, it was, really? yeah, and um, they created a champion right before our eyes. Um, being a, a trainer, how do you feel being someone's inspiration? As I, as you just mentioned, Shelton Benjamin, people are already saying that. I remember you talking about inspirations a little bit earlier. How does that make you feel now giving back physically, but as well as Black History Month projects being about you and everything in the future? How does, how does that make you feel, man? Um, to be honest, man, I, I never, I never, I've never noticed it. I've always just kind of like kept my head down and I was thinking about accomplish this, accomplish this, accomplish this. I'm one of those guys that rarely like looks up to smell the roses and really take stuff in. And I have promised myself it was a new part of my new year's resolution was to really like start taking in the places I've gone and the people that I meet and the things that I'm doing and really enjoy it before, you know, cause I'm 31 now, 15 years of my career has passed. And like, I'm not sure how much longer I have. So I'm really having to like take things in. So when now younger guys come to me and they talk to me about like, you know, 
what they've learned from me or like if they're inspired by me with something. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a great feeling to, to be that to some people. And um, I don't know. I just want to continue to spread positive energy in wrestling and in the world, you know, and I feel like that's what's helped me get here because, I mean, oof. I, I never imagined I'd be doing the things that I'm doing now. So just want to keep that positive energy going, man. I love it. I really appreciate you taking the time out, Jonathan Gresham. Been knowing you for a few years now, but there's a few more things I want to get from you. You have Doug Williams, past versus present. Yeah. How does that, because a lot of people, um, when you got re-signed, I know for me, I had to go back and do research that you've been in Ring of Honor before. Uh, the big resign that they announced. I was kind of like, wow. <laughs> like, he was in there years prior. So it was like more so of a return, a big return. Um, Doug Williams, this man, <laughs> name it, speaks for itself. This match yeah. when it was announced, past, present. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm excited about it. I remember not too long ago, it was right before I think Doug announced his retirement. Somebody had asked me online, maybe, uh, who did I want to wrestle that I haven't wrestled yet? And I've been blessed enough to wrestle everyone that I've really ever wanted, like truly, honestly, ever wanted to wrestle. I got a chance to wrestle them um, outside of, of course, Brian Danielson and Doug Williams. So Doug Williams was uh, another guy that I wanted to wrestle, and I said that, and then a promoter tried to book it. And then I think Doug messaged him and was like, well, I'm retiring soon. And soon after that, I think he did progress, and he um, – he announced his retirement. Uh, so, I mean, for me, it's a big deal, you know. Uh, and this is one of those moments I spoke to you about earlier where I'm going to, like, take time to really take in the moment, you know, take in meeting the guy. Uh, I've met him several times before, but on this level, it'll be a little more personal because we'll be working together. Uh, but really soak in that moment and really appreciate it, you know. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. I can't wait to see that one. And another opponent that I want to say to wrap things up is someone that I'm familiar <laughs> from with the W4 and just Atlanta, I saw, like, literally one of my first matches in the independent wrestling scene was from Fred Yehi. So oh. when that was announced in Tampa, Florida, <laughs> come April 2nd, I was like, this match has probably happened before, but I got to see it for myself <laughs> in person because I'm a big Fred Yehi fan. Uh, I am too. I am too. Wow. Oh. Like, what? <laughs> what is this? Um... What's your thoughts on that match coming up? April? Fred's an interesting guy. He's, uh, I don't want to say too much, but he's uh, very, um, he's a very quiet guy, very to himself. Um, I respect him a lot, his, his thought process towards wrestling, the way he sees things. I really like it because uh, I think we have like uh, contrasting styles. Like we, We're similar, but we're different as well. And I like the, the meetings that we've had. We've had a lot of matches that I enjoyed a lot of. And I'm really looking forward to this one, and I really hope that this will bring more eyes to Fred Yehi. Uh, I feel like he's he should be signed already somewhere. Yes. Hopefully that'll be Ring of Honor really soon so we can work together more often. Yes, I remember when I first got started, I thought that I was going to lose him because they were rambling about signing him around that time. And I was kind of like, I just met the man and everything. And now I'm I'm upset. Now I'm kind of like, come on, like, let's get the ball rolling. Like, let's get him in there. Like, everyone needs to see. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, you can't hold talent back. He'll, he'll get there eventually. Exactly. Exactly. Random before we leave, I, I read that you were suicide. Is this true? That's that's not true. That's not true. Okay, that was. I'm I mean, it's true. It happened, but I'm not proud of it. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I didn't want to do it. I did. It was one of those situations where I was there, and I feel like I think all all people in wrestling have eventually like had this situation happen to them. You're there. You're hanging out. Well, I was like booked to do like the shows and stuff, and then I guess they didn't want to use me as me, so they mentioned, hey. Uh, do you want to do suicide? And so I really was like, I don't want to, but I can't say that, I guess, because I'm not trying to get heat or whatever. So I was like, yeah, man, sure. So I did my best to suicide, but it was only for one night. It wasn't like an extended thing. That was so random. <laughs> yeah, it was. Like, I don't know. So I don't know. Weird. It was yeah. so weird. To be honest. Talk about you know the dude. weirdest thing, though? The weirdest thing was like, there was no investment in me at all. But they literally had, I, for, I forget her name, but the gear making lady, they had her like make an entire costume, suicide costume for me the day before. Or I think she had gotten it done the day of. 
Yeah, that's, it was crazy. That's extreme. That's extreme. And that, that outfit had to cost a few thousand dollars, man, because there's so many pieces to it. Wow. Gloves. Were you able to keep that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I looks like it on eBay, if, if, if so. Okay, okay, okay. I want to say thank you so much again for for answering so many of my random questions as well as um, advising. And I feel like a lot of wrestlers and people in the industry is going to take a lot from this right here, especially being so rare that you hop on the mic, share your viewpoints. I do want to say congratulations because it's no secret, man, that you are going to be walking the aisle. Like, that's pretty, that's pretty major, man. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> got the How you cut out there? I'm sorry. I said I'm happy for you. You got the championship. Oh. Got the life. Like, come on, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be happy too, man. That's it. Just trying to live life, be happy, man. That's important. Any final thoughts for the people out there? Mm, spread positivity, not negativity. Uh, do yourself a favor every day. Uh, do something positive for somebody else that you don't get anything in return. Uh, pay it forward. That's it. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. And if you made it this far, you're going to get something special. Treat. Ask them one question, Jonathan Gresham, and the person that answered correctly, I'm going to be sending them a merchandise from you. And they're going to get some free merch from you on me, especially for the hospitality. So uh, okay. if they can I answer this Jonathan Gresham question in the comments. They get that merchandise item. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And you can All right. It. So it's a question you're asking me to give them a question. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Should it be about me? Or can it be any kind of, any kind of question? It's on you. It's on you. It's on me. I'm going to put it on you. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think of something not so easy. I know, right? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, not obvious. Ooh, I got one. Okay. This is about me. Who was my first opponent in a professional wrestling match? Wow. Who was Jonathan Gresham's first opponent in a professional wrestling match? Answer that in the comments, and you can get a Jonathan Gresham merchandise as you wish. Mm -hmm. He ships out to you, no cost involved, not even shipping. And where can the people follow you on social media? Or you probably don't even want them to follow you. <laughs> I mean, you can. On hey. um, I try not to post too many cats things on Instagram <laughs> anymore. I try to keep it more professional wrestling related. Um, but you can follow me on Instagram. It's literally at Jonathan Gresham all together. Um, I'm not creative at all in that sense, so you get what you get there. Uh, Twitter, it is at the John Gresham. Um, and uh, what else do I have? I have a Facebook, but I just talk about video games on there, really. So, no Twitch. I thought about starting a Twitch, but um, you I'm, I'm not really good at the technology stuff. So, what? I have a YouTube, but it's more so based around like wrestlers learning techniques. So, somebody may need like, that. Somebody okay, need well, that. I have a YouTube page. It's called Octopus University. So you just look that up, and then uh, you'll find. Moi, uh, teaching little techniques on my my phone because um, I don't I don't care about like you know editing things and things of that nature. So I uh, just copy it and put it straight to the <laughs> straight to YouTube. You know. So uh, I think that's it, man. No Twitch though. I need to start one. Yeah, yeah. Twitch is the way. And TikTok too. Like if you guys can make videos. No. Okay. So much stuff, man. I can't keep up with it all. It's too much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> too all right, much. Then, man. I hope that you enjoy your evening. Can't thank you again. Thank everybody for listening. Hope that you learned a lot about Jonathan Gresham. And until his interview again with someone next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Thanks for having me, man. Always, man. Always.